Hello, I'm Michael Riga. This is Module 6 for EMC 400. We're speaking with Marty Teams, who's Lieutenant with Bartow County EMS. Marty, how long have you been in EMS? I've been in uh, EMS 32 years. Okay. Uh, in this module, we're kind of discussing some of the crises, uh, prevention, and also identifying uh, uh, what crises is, you know, each department might have. And as a whole in EMS, you know, in your time, what, were, what would you feel are some of the crises that EMS is experiencing as a whole currently? I think one of the current uh, crises that we're seeing is, is just uh, lack of manpower. It's, uh, it's lack of paramedics, um, there's not getting into it quick enough to keep up with the attrition that's, that's going on with it. Uh, everybody struggles for uh, employees, whether it's at the EMT level or the paramedic level. Uh, and and you know, part of the problem with that is too is, is there's such a variance in pay, there's a variance in, in education. There's not really a set standard across the state of Georgia uh, for uh, paramedics in, in, in the EMS field like there is with nursing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's pretty much a set. You, know, you have to follow uh, certain guidelines and take certain classes and everybody comes out with a, a minimum of an associate's degree in nursing. We really haven't met that, uh, we haven't met that goal yet. We haven't reached that milestone in EMS. So probably, that's probably the biggest thing I think I see right now with this is, is just the manpower and constantly on the search for paramedics and, and retention of those paramedics. You know, kind of looking at the whole um, SWOT guidelines, you know, your strengths, weaknesses, um, you know, that sounds like a big weakness for a department. You know, what could be a tactic to combat that that you think, you know, you know taking some of the classes that you've taken in your time, um, and especially as being an officer, what, there must have been some conversation about this. What are some ideas that have been thrown out about that? Well, you have to constantly be uh, aware of what the other departments around you are paying. Uh, us being just north of the metro area, we're constantly in, in uh, battle with, with the Metro Atlanta services to, to get uh, employees and to retain those employees. Everybody now, uh, especially the millennials, they seem more focused on money at the moment uh, versus looking at a long-term career. And, uh, you know, so that's the thing, big thing now that, uh, that we see is we're constantly in the battle with uh, the Metro Atlanta area agencies and the surrounding agencies that, that border us, we constantly have to watch what they're paying because wherever the high, wherever the money is, that's where the personnel shifts to. Uh, you know, has there also been talk about maybe changing the formats of the trucks? I know up north they do a lot of ALS intercept by using the advanced EMTs and then having more of that lead medic role in like almost like a supervisor vehicle. Um, I know Grady EMS has experimented some of that, looking at Boston and FDNY. Mm -hmm. Is that, a, especially more of in our rural setting, is that something that could work, do you think? or Possibly. Uh, I think we'd have to look at some of the research and, and really see, see what the research for these bigger departments is showing. Is it something that's a positive outcome for them? Uh, and, and take the data that those bigger departments have developed and, and and documented and see what it shows for them and then it may be something we could implement for us uh, especially with some of the recent changes in EMS is letting uh, EMTBs now work on 911 trucks uh, that may be something that we have to follow. it may be something that's thrust upon us uh, where that uh, we have more uh, BLS trucks that are followed up with ALS intercept by supervisors or doesn't necessarily have to be a supervisor, mm -hmm. but as long as it's you know an ALS person in a, in a some kind of SUV or some kind of vehicle that ALS intercept. Um, kind of talking about millennials with that, do you think that would give them more? Because I know there's been some talk that sometimes because of how much they're involved with technology that they're not challenged, would then having the more of a defined career, kind of that career path is not just you reach your medic or your EMT and you're on an ambulance, it's just you can kind of now work up. Do you think that would kind of help some of the millennials in retaining some of them? Would that provide them a challenge, do you think, to do so? It would give them a challenge. That challenge, I think, for the millennials, with my experience, is you've got, you've got to be able to compensate them. Uh, and and it's, yeah, I think that's a problem. Everybody struggles with the, the, uh, the money aspect, the budgetary aspect of it. But yeah, I mean, the challenge, that would maybe give an option for another challenge. You know, we've there has been talk in Georgia in the past about creating a, a critical care paramedic role, so that might be something we can do uh, in, in our state as a whole 
to, to give another option because once you reach paramedic level there's really nowhere from there to go you can go into nursing uh, you know and take that as the next step but there's really not uh, there's not a whole lot of path I guess you'd say mm -hmm. and once you get to paramedic level then then that's pretty much it as far as your medical training unless you take and, and you step into that critical care arena on your own and you seek out uh, additional training in that type of arena on your own uh, the only other pathway is, is this into some type of field management, field supervision or management at your individual department. Yeah, it sounds like there's a real lack of additional medicine pathway. It's more becomes more that admin where there's you yeah. can't specialize in anything unless you look into leave like with a helicopter or move on to a different career field. Yeah. So it sounds exactly like there's right. a lot of addressing that needs to be with any major problem. There's a lot of little things that there's problems with, and it sounds like one big thing is is that a lot of different government agencies need to come together. It sounds like like CSM with Medicare on reimbursements and then also with uh, DOT and NREMT about coming together about standards. So it sounds like there's a lot of agencies that need to find a way to come together and liaison together. together. And you're exactly right. You know, and um, the, the paramedicine, the um, where the paramedicines, uh, the paramedics are going out to the homes now the term escapes me. Oh, the community paramedic. Community paramedic, yes. You know, that's another option that could be available to you. But like you said, it that's uh, funding for that is going to be an op a, a problem too. So you've got to figure out uh, some way to for reimbursement for EMS because yeah. they can't do that for free. There's manpower involved and expenses involved with that. So, you know, that, that's something that can be looked at that could help us in many different ways. Not only it opens up our pathway, yeah. but uh, it, it could help us our community partners and our citizens as yeah. well. Sounds like funny is the kind of the, the linchpin of all of this. So. I think it is. Well, I appreciate you taking this time and uh, you know, I really thank you for the insight and the knowledge and sharing it with the class. I appreciate it. My pleasure. It. Thank, thank you, you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah.